We're back and you're listening to Tell John. I'm Senator John Horn and our topic uh, for discussion tonight is going to be the Jackson Redevelopment Authority. And uh, we're going to be speaking with the latest and greatest executive director of JRA who just came on board. He's none other than Christopher Pike. And let me just tell you a little bit about JRA. Uh, it was formed uh, back in the early 60s, if I'm remembering correctly, with the idea that uh, we would spur development, uh, uh, prevent the spread of, of um, uh, slums and, and blight and, and urban renewal areas of the city. Uh, it, it was also designed to manage property, especially in the downtown area, and to uh, spur economic development. And, and to cause economic and social development to occur and to create um, a, uh, a, an environment for public health, safety, uh, mo uh, the morale of the citizens and, and our personal welfare. Uh, so uh, our guest tonight is Christopher Pike. And Christopher Pike just came over from the Atlanta area uh, he's the new executive director of Jackson Redevelopment Authority, and we're looking for really great things to occur under his leadership. Chris, Christopher, it's great to I almost call you Chris. <laughs> you, you, don't call him Chris now. No, that's fine. That's fine. You, you can if you want to. Uh. <laughs> but Christopher Pike is, is a newly minted executive director of Jackson Redevelopment Authority. Brother, it's good to have you here. It's good to have you, you in Jackson. Thank you. I'm great to have to you here. in Jackson. You know, I looked at your 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 um, resume and your background, and you have a tremendous amount, excuse me, of, of experience uh, and uh, uh, expertise in a, a bunch of different areas that we need uh, here in, in Jackson to help grow and, and develop our our city. Uh, so, uh, what 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 inspired you to, to even uh, make application for this position? You're doing great. Over in, in Atlanta, you um, are president and CEO of Urban Pulse Universal, yes, which is an economic development, real estate, and development uh, services firm. You've had experience uh, working as director of economic development for the city of South Fulton, which is one of the fastest growing cities in Georgia. Uh, you uh, have had a lot of experience with tourism, with real estate, uh, with all kinds of development. Yes, and and we, we, don't get me wrong, we're happy to have you over here, my brother. We're, we're, we're happy that. to have you here. Uh, but what what uh, inspired you to want to take on this challenge here in the Jackson Redevelopment Authority? Yes, sir. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for having me on the show. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I, I will say, I always tell folks whenever I talk and whenever I speak is that, you know, people find what they were created to do. Uh, why the, mm. What's their purpose for being on this planet? And for me, uh, my purpose is economic development. Mm -hmm. I was created to do that. That's my purpose for being on this planet. And, you know, I've done that a lot in Georgia. I've done that um, really successfully in Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, but the opportunity presented itself to come to Jackson. And I think one of the main things that really drove me to the job and the position was just a lot of the uh, challenges that Jackson had. Mm -hmm. So when I came here and interviewed for the job, uh, did a bunch of research about Jackson, obviously, and just knowing that uh, what I was put here to do and the assignment that I have here in Jackson, those things came together. and This was just uh, the right time to be here. Okay, so you came here to do the Lord's work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came here to do what I was put on the planet to do. <laughs> well, that's great. We're glad to have you. Yeah. We're, we're really glad to have you. And, and, and uh, I was reading some of your background and said, Man, this, this brother and I have a lot in common. Okay. You, you've been involved uh, with economic development. My whole um, focus in my 32 years in the Mississippi Senate has been around economic development. I was at the Mississippi Development Authority just before I, I, I got elected, served as a state tourism director, served as a film commissioner for the state, bringing movies in to be filmed on loca location. I see you've done some of that as well. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I, in, involved in the arts and promoting the arts. I see you've done a lot of that as well. And then you tell me when you first come in here, 
that hey, you know, I used to have a radio show too. Right, right. <laughs> so, so we got a lot in common, and, and that's that's got, got a lot to talk about. Yeah. What what do you see? Uh, so so as you look at Jackson, right. what does Christopher Pike see when he looks at Jackson, Mississippi, from a development standpoint? Well, honestly, what I see is opportunity and uh, a lot of it. Right. And right. One of the things that you know, we've had a lot of conversations with different folks as I've been here over the last, um, at this point, 30-some days. And one of the things, that the reoccurring theme is Jackson is the last city to experience a renaissance in the South. Right? Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. you know, you see what's going on in Austin and Houston. You see what's going Richmond, on in Birmingham. Yeah. Uh, you see what's going on in Charlotte and those mm-hmm. other places. And of course, Atlanta's just a, a different creature different animal, itself. Yeah, yeah. But you can see in, in, in Nashville and some of the, in Memphis, there's a lot of, there's a rebirth in a lot of southern cities. And um, I think it's Jackson's turn. Right. And okay. so for okay. me, I see that as the opportunity of, of what we can be taking advantage of is mm-hmm. the fact that uh, there, we're, there's a lot of opportunity here. And um, we just have to have the right message. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to have the right vision, and uh, we have to have everybody on the same page, agreeing to go in the same direction. Now, right. we can argue about how fast to get there, right. Right. Uh, but we all got to agree to be on the same page. You, you know, you know um, that as we were preparing to come in uh, from the earlier, sh- the, the previous show, we are talking about the fact that, that uh, I gave my opinion that there's too much distrust in, in Jackson. I, I don't know if you, you've been long enough to, to witness any of that, but that's my observation having lived here as long as I have, that, that the, uh, the black community doesn't trust the white community. The white community doesn't trust the black community. Rich people don't trust poor people. Poor people don't trust rich people. Uh, folks who live in, 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 in South Jackson don't trust folks who live in North Jackson. Folks in, oh, nobody trusts it. Folks who live over in Northeast Jackson is <laughs> where, where most of the wealthy live. It's, so I mean, it's 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 a distrust, and it's it's like it it's 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 our most common malady or disease in Jackson, in my opinion, that hinders our ability to come together. I don't. You don't need to comment on that because you're, you're here, new on the ground, and all that. And I don't. I know you don't want to make any unnecessary enemies right off the bat. By some of your 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 opinions, but but uh, when when you look at successful communities, what are some of the ingredients that are must ingredients to have if you're going to be a successful community, generating jobs, uh, creating a, a strong workforce, uh, creating a, a a a an environment for uh, growth and prosperity through economic development. Well, well, first, let me address the first part of what you said. So um, I don't think that that, that dynamic is just unique to Jackson, right? I've yeah, worked in yeah, other communities yeah, yeah. that's had the same exact situation. So I don't want us to... We, we shouldn't let put, that, right, we shouldn't uh, let that uh, become our stumbling block. Right. We, yeah. we shouldn't use that as a, as a barometer of whether right. or not we're successful here in Jackson or not. Because every community that I've worked in, the, especially ones that are predominantly African-American, right. Have the same issue, uh-huh. so okay. um, so I don't, I don't want us to get caught up on that. And the second thing is, you know, we have to be successful in spite of. Right. That's something that I've always told communities that I've worked in that no matter what the demographics say, no matter you know what stumbling blocks have been placed in front of us, we have to be successful in spite of those things. And the way that mm-hmm. we become, let the church say amen <laughs> to that. And, and the way we become successful in spite of those things is we have to have a plan. And, Duh. And so, Christopher, hope, you hit the nail on the head, <laughs> brother. You, yeah, absolutely. And I tell people, you know, if you, you if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Right. And so right. we have to have a plan so that if some if a developer came to me tomorrow and said, "Hey, I have two hundred million dollars to right. invest in Jackson," right, then I go to that book and say, "Well, this is the plan that the community says that they want." And take page two hundred out of this book, right. and you go and you do go that. And run that, that run that show. And yeah. then mm-hmm. everybody is on the same page about what, right. we're, what we're supposed to be doing. And what right. I tell people all the time is, you know, that community plan has to be something that people can get behind. It has to have community buy-in. Right. So that means right. the community has to be the folks that help create that plan. And if right. the community isn't at the table when that plan is developed, right. then, uh, it's never going to be successful because every time you do something, 
and that plan, folks are going to be questioning it. So right. we, we got to have the community be a part of drafting that plan. So, so I'm assuming, based on what you just said, that one of, of your top priorities is to start putting out some sort of a, a community planning process in place. Absolutely. So there's um, so when I came on board, uh, the JRA board had already uh, had a firm that they engaged to help do some planning around okay. uh, a TOD plan, which is a transit-oriented development around Union Station. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I recommended to the board is that we expand that scope of work to include more areas. Uh, and so the board agreed that that was the right thing to do. So we're going to expand that TOD area not only to include Union Station, but all of Ferris Street. Um, we're going to go up to the Atmos building, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that we need to address pretty pretty immediately, mm -hmm. and then over to the convention center area, and then looking at how we can have some um, fruitful discussions with Jackson State and the mm -hmm. future of what they want to do right. uh, okay. in their area. And so um, we, br we plan to bring all those stakeholders to the table to have conversations around uh, what the, those different areas look like when we do this master plan, but we can't do that in silos. And, right, um, and right. So it's got to have buy-in from the community. So. Right. And, and you know, when you say that, uh, the siloing, the fact that we, 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 folks have their organization over here, their operation over here, and they operate in a little silo, and then somebody else is doing this over there, and that's a silo, and then somebody else is doing and it's not being woven together into right. a cohesive plan of action. Right. Um, so so uh, uh, you, you mentioned um, Fair Street, you mentioned Jackson State, you, me you mentioned um, uh, uh, some, some other parts of the city around the convention center and, and so forth. What, one of the things that, that I've always wondered about and, and I've thought that, that maybe JRA should do a better job of defining what its territory right. it, it really is going to be. Is it just downtown? Is, is, it, is it just um, uh, the central business district? Uh, uh, or does it, does it need to encompass uh, more aspects of the entire city? Sure. So, you know, as you had already mentioned earlier, um, JRA is a redevelopment authority. And so the purpose is for it to go into areas that have uh, underinvestment, uh, what would be considered just for terminology purposes, slum and blight. Mm -hmm. um, and then our job is to go in and revitalize those areas. And so at any given time, any area in the city could be designated for that. And so mm -hmm. our geographical boundaries is where the identification of slum and blight is. And so if we... Our, and sometimes that changes, right? So if we do mm -hmm. our job mm -hmm. right and we revitalize an area, well, our services aren't really needed in that area. Anymore. Right. So then we move on to, to the a next different area. part of yeah. the city. And so right. um, the goal is, is you know, to put ourselves out of business. And mm -hmm. so uh, by revitalizing the city, but, um, you know, so that, that changes. Where we do work changes based on what the need of the city is. Mm -hmm. Well, so um, back to the planning. Uh, so how would you envision, um, and do, first of all, do you see JRA as being needing to be in the role of rolling out and, and kind of um, uh, helping to develop the plan, or is that, should that be left to someone else? Um, so I don't think, I think somebody needs to be the owner of the plan, right? And right. so whoever the organization it is is responsible, responsible for implementing the plan, that, that should be who has the ownership of it. Um, obviously, it's not just one organization or just one mm -hmm. entity within mm -hmm. the city because we but all... But somebody got to own it. Yeah, but somebody... We have to go to somebody and be like, hey, you're responsible for this. Right, what happened? Right, yeah, and, um, yeah. So I think that is kind of the role of JRA. But mm -hmm. obviously, we have partners within right. this work. And right. so um, Hines County Economic Development Authority has a role in this. Uh, Visit Jackson, which is doing their own master plan around tourism, has a role to play in this. Obviously, mm -hmm. the city of Jackson has a role to play right. in it. Um, the downtown partners, they have a, a, a role, the chamber. So all of these entities have a, a very important role to and, play. And uh, so. JR ha has a real pet peeve about the JPS, Jackson Public Schools, right. 
playing a more vital role in, in the, into the growth and development of the city through its educational uh, strength. Yeah. And the park system. And the park system. So when I tell people, when we talk about economic development, I tell people everything's economic development. When mm -hmm. I first came to the city of South Fulton, I was in every meeting that they possibly had. And I said, why am I here? <laughs> I mean, we'll have a meeting with the police department. We'd have a meeting with Parks and Rec. We'd have a meeting with code enforcement. But all of it really is economic, economic development. development. Yeah. Because if it yeah. doesn't, if, if the Parks and Rec creates the quality of life in your community, well, quality of life is what people want when they move exactly. to the community. And so exactly. it's important that we invest money into the parks facilities and that quality of life amenity that people want because that's going to do more for you than anything you can do from any other perspective. Folk, folks have got to want to be here. They and, if they, and if they don't have, don't feel as if they have a good quality of life while being here, they're going to find somewhere else. They're going to Austin, or they're going to Nashville, or they're going to Dallas, Atlanta, wherever. Um, and and uh, I don't know that that we really appreciate that the the knowledge of that as much as we can. One one of the things that I think about is that there, regardless of whether it's true or not there's a perception that there's nothing to do in Jackson or nothing to do in Mississippi by, by some of our younger people. Mm -hmm. And so we graduate about 17,000 students a year in Mississippi. 40% of them within two years of graduation have had it up out of here and they're, they're in Austin or they're in Nashville or New York, or LA or Atlanta or wherever. Uh, and and part of it is that the, the young people, I, I, I can find plenty of things. I used to be state tourism director. I know there's a lot of stuff to, to do here, but we, we either are not well articulating that to young people or they're just not interested in those particular things and they're going to places where they have interest. And, and it seems to me that, that, that the semi the, the tide of the brain drain is one of the biggest challenges that we've got. Right. In, in Jackson in particular and in Mississippi in general. Yeah. Well, I will say, you know, we have to be thoughtful about that. And so we can say that there's plenty of stuff to do and it's stuff that we like to do. Right. But it may not be what they like to do. Right. It might not be what they like to do. And I think that's where we really miss the mark in communities. And I've worked in communities that have missed the mark because they felt like, well, this is what I like and everybody should like what I like. Right. And that's right. not true. And sometimes you have to do stuff that you may not necessarily personally do, but other people enjoy that. And we have to right. you know, be open-minded to do things that maybe it's not something we like, but it's something that attracts a diverse group. And that's really what we're seeing when we see you know, young folk leave a community. They're saying to you that we don't see ourselves fitting into right. this community. Right. And if you want them to stay, then you have to change that. Right. Um, and you can't give lip, lip service to it. Right? Right. You can't say we want young people to stay and then you don't, you do, don't anything do anything to keep to, them, right, to keep them exactly. here. Um, All right, if, if you're just tuning in and you're listening to Tell John, I'm Senator John Horn. My guest tonight is Mr. Christopher Pike. He is an experienced and successful leader in economic development, real estate development, government administration, leadership development, and business management. And he is the new executive director of the Jackson Redevelopment Authority that's based right here in downtown Jackson, but the mission of the organization is, is to do uh, work all over the city of Jackson to help in its revitalization. Uh, he's given us his vision about uh, his, uh, what, what he sees uh, in Jackson and, and, and what we can be doing to improve our, our conditions, uh, whether it's quality of life, whether it's economic development, whether it's uh, public safety or uh, any number of things, and uh, we're going to continue the conversation when we come back. But we're going to take a station break right now. GW, do your thing. <laughs> Night fishing. Do you, you know Bobby Rush? You know Bobby Rush? Yeah. Yeah. He won his third Grammy a couple, a couple of weeks ago. Okay, yeah. Long overdue. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's our one Bobby Rush.
All right, that was Bobby Rush talking about a little night fishing. I don't know what he's talking about there, but, but it, it sounds like it might be a lot of fun. <laughs> Christopher Pike is our guest uh, on uh, Tell John tonight, and he's the new director of the Jackson Redevelopment Authority. He comes with a lot of expertise, a, a lot of knowledge, a lot of, of uh, past accomplishment in other parts of the South where he's done development, and he's helped to... Uh, help communities establish themselves as economic development juggernauts, uh, uh, but also he's helped help them to find what their sweet spot is as it relates to becoming an economic development juggernaut. So, uh, Chris, uh, Christopher, we, we, we were talking a minute ago about um, the, the whole need for planning and and um, uh, putting a, 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 a series of, of deliberate actions together to get us to the finish line of where we want to go. So as we start playing, are there some first steps that you would say, hey, we got to do these things first in order to get ourselves into a planning posture? Right. So one of the things that we're doing in GRA as part of this uh, TOD master plan. Right. Around, around uh, the Union, Union Station, Station. Yep. right? Uh, we're doing a market study. And so it's vitally important to have the market study because the market study informs what we're going to do from the master planning. And so when we look at a market study, like there's a lot of conversation about building a hotel next to the convention center. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the right size for that mm -hmm. hotel? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. how many rooms should we have? And um, what other amenities should we have around that? Uh, when we look at housing downtown, what mm -hmm. is the right number of housing that we need right. to be able to support a commercial base that yep. we want to have in downtown? Um, and the answers to those questions nobody has right now. Right. They, nobody in Jackson can tell you the answer to those, those two or three questions you just right. posed right now. Right, and that's why we're doing the market study. Right. So what the market study will tell us is that, okay, we think that downtown Jackson can absorb 500 new hotel rooms. And so then we know, okay, we need to build... A hotel that either has 500 rooms or two hotels that have 250 rooms. Right. Uh, but that market study will tell us, based on what's going on from our from our demographics, from our economy, what the market will stand, and then we build a plan based off of that. So mm -hmm. now we have some informed data that says, "Hey, this is what you all should be doing." And so right. you can't guess. There's there's right. there's no guessing no economic, economic development. development. You're right. and there's no such thing as if you build if you build it, they will come. That's right. only for the movies. That right. is not real reality. You have to have the data to support what the decisions you're making from an economic development standpoint. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, so uh, you know we we have a, a lot of, of 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 promising things going on in Jackson, but but then there's the crime. Um, does the crime scare you? I mean, the, the fact that we have as as much that's documented as we do, uh, does it scare scare you as an economic developer? Well, I will tell you, since I've been here, Atlanta has had uh, a, a few instances, one at Six Flags, one over at the Mall of Georgia, that were pretty major type of incidents. And um, since I've been in Jackson, I haven't heard anything on that level. So right. the reality is, Anywhere you have two or three people, you're going to have some crime. Right, right. And I think what happens is it's, it's people's perception. Like, for example, I live downtown. I walk to work two or three mm -hmm. times a day. It's dark when I walk home. I've never felt like my life was in danger walking from my office back right. to the apartment. Right. And so um, we're definitely not going to discount the things happen here. Obviously, right. there are things that happen. But I don't, from just my experience, I've not seen anything that is major compared to other major cities right, in this right, country. Right. We got a caller on line one, I would, I would suppose, with a question for our guest. Uh, good evening, you're on Tell John. Go right ahead. Hey, John. Look, uh, I'm enjoying you all's program, but the first step, I think, in organizing this city and your planning development plans and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. if we were to start with the city, then uh, respect for, to the business people in the city of Jackson. What do you mean by that? Okay, well, for instance, uh, you can't, if you want to, to get a uh, meeting with the police chief, they tell you to fax, uh, send them a fax or send them an e I mean, send them an email, and they will have them give you a call back. Uh, if you want to have an issue that you'd like to discuss with the mayor, you can't get to them. They'll never call you back. Uh, the uh, that lady down there, I guess she called herself the 
the city administrator, whatever she is, uh, uh, next to the mayor down there, they won't call you back. And uh, I think that has a lot to do with it because there are a lot of business people who got money that they don't mind spending. And uh, I don't have a lot of money, but I have a lot of investment here. I own several commercial buildings, a couple of apartment complexes, and stuff like that. But you can't get any service from the city. Any, uh, you, can, you know, you just can't get the city to cooperate. Okay. And, uh, and if they could start being more conducive, you know, conducive to returning people call or uh, having somebody get back with you, I think that would go a long way uh, with economic development of this town. Thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to voice my comment. Yes, sir. Thank you for calling. So, so, so um, uh, government responsiveness uh, in, in the cities that you've worked in, have you, you had uh, issues where people complained or had concerns about that, that sort of thing? Uh, it's not an uncommon complaint. <laughs> it's not an uncommon complaint. Um, and, you know, it's various levels to, to that. And, and, of course, I can't, Hold on, speak, caller. I can't speak to um, all the dynamics that happens in the mayor's office and right. other departments within the city. I can only say that, you know, that is an important part is um, businesses. They're, well, they're well, part of the community just like the right. residents. And so. And, and it may be that, that that may be a role JRA can help to intercede with. Some of, some of it you may not need to talk to the chief of staff for the city or the mayor or the police chief. There may be um, uh, uh, someone within your firm, your office, that might be able to address both concerns. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, well, I, like I said, we're all in this together, right? So Correct. we're all partners. And so definitely if there are business-related questions, you can right. call our office. Right. Um, and we'll definitely uh, try to help you out the best we can. Good deal. we got another caller. Go ahead, caller. You're on line one. Yes, uh, I was uh, listening to the gentleman that spoke earlier in reference to the inability to do business in the city of Jackson. I, I, I want to express... Uh, my concern based upon a personal experience that I had when I went to the city of Jackson to purchase a privilege license for a new business that I had started and uh, they would not accept a check nor a credit card nor a debit card uh, for the purchase of the license and uh, I had a I had an existing business which is which is in Jackson they wouldn't even accept a check from that business a business check and they told me that I would have to have a check from the from the business that I was requesting the previous license for, and uh, and, you know, and uh, uh, and, it, 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 and I had, they took me through so many changes in, in, for the application process, and they just make it increasingly difficult to do business in the city of Jackson, and uh, and I, and, you know, it's good that the gentleman here has not experienced uh, any. Uh, 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 Incidents that would uh, alarm him, but uh, I have because I've had two people murdered about a block from my house, gunned down. So I think crime is the number one issue mm -hmm. that we need to address before we can really look at any form of real economic development because nobody can do business where bullets are flying and people are dying. So y'all have a good day here. Thank you, caller. We appreciate your, your input there. Um, Anything you care to respond to from, from what he just said? Uh, well, you know, obviously, I run JRA. I don't run the city. Right, so I right, can only right, speak right. to the systems yeah. but, uh, but that we have in JRA. There might be a, a role that JRA could, could play in streamlining some of the business development um, activities or, or to help facilitate, right. maybe not run it, but, but help to facilitate uh, get, getting some of this uh, stuff streamlined. Because you, you do hear... Uh, complaints from people about trying to go in and get a pull a permit uh, or to, to get a, a business license or to uh, do some whatever interaction with the city it's it's sometimes fraught with 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 some inertia uh, and inactivity on, on the part of, of, of the folks you encounter but look uh, we're going we're gonna to carry the conversation a, a forward a little bit more but I think we need to take a, a station break right now to do station ID and then we, we're going to come back and have some more conversation with Christopher Pike, the new director of the Jackson Redevelopment Authority. He's got some big plans for us, y'all.
All right, we're back. You're listening to Tell John. I'm Senator John Horn. Christopher Pike is our um, newly minted Jackson Redevelopment Authority Executive Director, uh, and, and he's been with JRA all of 30 days. Uh, but uh, he's hit the ground running. And, and um, Christopher, do, do you have any, is there anything that, that jumps out to you in, in the way of projects or priorities as you travel around the city that, hey, we could jump on this right away. You, you mentioned um, uh, what you're doing around the train station, Union right. Station and all that. Uh, there's some, some stuff movement going on uh, uh, around the convention center. Uh, what about Fair Street? What about uh, the, the, the area over by Commerce Street uh, where the, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the new uh, distillery is uh, down south of the convention center. Uh, do you see the, see the, this, the central business district uh, and downtown is where you need to, to, to establish your beachhead first, or is it South Jackson? Is it West Jackson? Is it North Jack Jackson? Right. So when I got my start in economic development from historic preservation. I was on the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, Pretty, pretty soon after I got out of college. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my introduction to economic development through historic preservation. Uh, and one of the things that you learn in this business is that a community is only as good as its heart, right? And in every community, the downtown is the heart of the community. And so um, downtown has to be working right, right. For it to go out to the rest of the right. parts of the community. Okay. And so you know, my thoughts just based on what the community has said is, is Ferris Street uh, is the number one priority. Um, mm -hmm. And because that has been something, uh, there is a book with a, uh, a young kid on a bicycle holding a sign in 1970 said, Save Ferris Street. Mm -hmm. And so the issues that we've been seeing on Ferris Street have been, been with us for a while. It's yeah. not just something that, right. that's new. Um, and the issue that we're having is that we're losing a lot of the historical fabric of Fair Street. Right. The building catches on fire when it falls down. Oh, no down. doubt, no and doubt. so if we want to keep the integrity of the district, we need to do something. And that needs to happen pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I see that really as one of the um, number one areas for JRA is to figure out how do we get that back to where it needs to be. And considering the fact that, you know, JRA owns two whole blocks of Fair mm -hmm. Street, um, you know, we need to do something with from, our assets. From uh, Amit to Hamilton and Hamilton, uh, Amit to... to uh, we own the 200 yeah. and the 300. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, uh, God, I forgot the name of that, that street. Um, but, yeah, from Amit to Hamilton, that's the two-block area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, uh, what about... Uh, have, have you had any, any chance to give any thought to these 11 to 13 school closures that Jackson Public Schools is, is looking at it. Any thoughts there? Uh, yeah, so I that announcement came down in the middle of my interview process, right. which obviously um, when you hear about a school system um, shrinking that quickly right. uh, and closing that many facilities yeah. just in one year, um, there's a lot of concern that comes out of that, and, and one of them is you know, having that many vacant buildings right. sitting that hit, uh, hit, hit the marketplace at one time, at one time, and we already have a blight issue yeah. in the city. Yeah, and, and so thinking about how do we repurpose facilities to become either community centers or converting some of these into residential facilities, mm -hmm. um, that's been really big in, in a lot of communities. Right. Converting old school buildings into, you know, a, a affordable or attainable housing, I think, is something that we should be looking at. Um, obviously having access for economic development opportunities. So a lot of times these old schools turn into hubs for 
like maker spaces or uh, incubators for businesses mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. small businesses. So I think there's a lot of opportunity to convert a lot of these facilities because most of these schools, while you know they may need some renovation, uh, once you build a school, it's a pretty well built uh, building. And so I think there's still a lot of life left in them. It's just figuring out how can we convert them to something that's going to impact the community in a positive way. Positive way, exactly. Well, you know, um, uh, the, the biggest announcement that we've had in, um, in the state ever was the $10 billion uh, AWS uh, Amazon Web Services, a.k.a. Amazon, uh, that is coming to bring data centers uh, to the Canton area off of Highway 22 at their mega site, but they're also going to be right at the corner of Highland Collin Parkway and, and Catalina Road, which is just on the edge of Jackson, the Jackson City limits. It's actually three minutes from my house, uh, and and um, what what these data centers are going to do will be transformative in terms of of what they're going to put into uh, some of the school systems. What they're going to do as far as um, uh, workforce development and, and uh, um, job opportunities um, for for this area for Central Mississippi, and and what we were told is that the reason that the Amazon is here was two reasons that that they finally picked Jackson. They tried to find a way to say no to Mississippi because of Mississippi, you know. And and first thing we we, we did that we, that we took off the table that was an objection to them was the flag, you know. We we, we did that that, comp, that 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 was not a reason to say no anymore because we got rid of that Confederate flag. The second thing is the quickness with which. Our, utility, our electric utility responded to uh, Amazon as to their energy needs. Now, Amazon is uh, asking for one gigabyte of, of power and, and renewable energy of, and electricity to, to fuel these data centers. And energy stepped up to the plate quickly in a way that astonished Amazon. So uh, they want a, an extra gigabyte of power. Entergy only generates three gigabytes of power for the entire service area that it, it has in Mississippi. So you're, you're talking about a 25% increase in what you're, you're generating uh, for, for one company. The second thing was, was the presence of dark fiber. And it just so happens that, the, you know, dark fiber, you know, we say dark fiber, what the heck is dark fiber? Well, it's, it's the, the fiber optics that, that runs the Internet. And underneath the ground, from Mexico all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, and from Dallas, Texas to Atlanta, Georgia, there's all this dark fiber. And guess what? It runs through Mississippi. And it runs, they, they intersect right under the stack. In, in just uh, outside of downtown Jackson, where, where I-20 and 55 come together, you know, that we call it the stack. The dark fibers run, and we're talking about building size cables that have that dark fiber. So, so um, as you look at, at JRA, Jackson Redevelopment Authority, and, and uh, what potential uh, we might have to attract additional business, are you, are you looking at that dark fiber issue at all? Uh, so... It is something that I think is important, right? Because having the connectivity is what's going to bring more right. of those. Right. More, more Amazons. Yeah, more, yeah. more Amazon type developments. Right. Um, I, but so for us, I think our our role in that is is to create the environment where more of those industries want to come right. to the Jackson area. And so. Um, so this, your focus is going to be quality of life quality, issues, quality of life. workforce development. Uh, and, and just to give you an example, so um, you all may have heard of a company called Southwire. Uh, mm -hmm. Southwire right, is the world's largest produce, well, America's country, uh, United States' largest producer of copper wire, probably about 80% of the homes. Really? In, in I did not know that they produce all that. Yep. And so they're, they're headquartered in Carrollton, Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, right about an hour outside of Atlanta. And so um, they recently announced that they, are, they have moved offices over into the battery. And so in the battery, mm -hmm. is that new to I've been to the battery. battery. Yeah, it's nice, right? Yeah. Uh, in, in the baseball, uh, uh, the Braves, Braves, yeah, 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 the yeah, 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 yeah. around the battery, 
And what they found out was that um, in order for them to retain the workforce that they needed, um, they had to be in a place where young folks wanted to be, and that was not Carroll County. That right. was in the Battery. And so uh, they opened up a mass of like headquarters, second headquarters, if you will, at the Battery because those young folks want to be in that hustle and bustle. The same thing with Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A has a, an amazing campus in College Park, uh, but it's kind of isolated unto itself. And so they actually opened up some offices on the Beltline. So everybody in the world mm-hmm. knows what the belt line is. Right, right. Uh, but again, those young folks wanted to be in that type of environment, and so um, they had to create that. And so even when you think about just being in Atlanta, it's not just enough to be in Atlanta. You have to be in a specific place, and the mm-hmm. reason why they want to be in that specific place is because of that quality of life. And right. I think we have to continue to grow mm-hmm. that here in Jackson, um, whatever Jackson version of that is. Right. Right? So we're not trying to replicate what Atlanta's doing or anybody right. else. But, but your focus is going to be quality of life issues. Yes, because what happens is when people want to be somewhere, the businesses are going to follow that. Mm-hmm. And I think that mm-hmm. will be one of the keys to us attracting more of those type of industries mm-hmm. uh, to Mississippi. Have you been tracking the One Lake Project at all? I, I've heard about it, but not been totally inversed in it. Okay, in okay. It. Yeah, well, uh, it, it's a flood control project that also uh, uh, boasts future quality of life issues, economic development, um, uh, outdoor recreation, um, commercial residential facilities along the Pearl River to create the Pearl River as a destination for, for, for uh, central Mississippi. And it, it's got some potential, but we, we're still working on, on trying to, we got the money, but, but the, the core secretary has to release the money and he's getting some pushback from some environmentalists uh, on some issues. But I think that I'm hearing that we, we may be on the straight and narrow to get a decision soon there. But the quality of life issues, downtown focus, because you got this out front door, got to, got to put, put, establish a stronger beachhead there. What else? Uh, well, I think we need to understand how the school systems and the universities fit into mm-hmm. the future mm-hmm. of Jackson as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, and it's not unique to Jackson. It's a lot of communities I've worked in. Um, they tend to be in silos or isolated, and you need to figure out how to get them off those campuses and get them plugged in to what's going on in the rest of the community. I think that that's vitally important. Um, if you look at some of the things that other institutions have done of, of higher learning, they've taken an active role in economic development. That's absolutely. And uh, we have to figure out how to, to do that here. Higher education and Hospitals, healthcare, healthcare. You know, because we we've got uh, four world class hospitals here: the VA, St. Dominic, Baptist, and the Medical Center, and and the, the role that they play in economic development uh, and and job creation and quality of life issues is very very important as well. Absolutely, yeah. I agree one hundred percent. Well, look, we've got a couple of minutes left, um, and Christopher Pike is our guest on on the Tell John Show tonight. Uh, uh, Christopher, is is there um, um, is there anything if you, you had to, to speak to the citizens of Jackson, which is what you we're doing tonight? Right. Uh, is there any specific message that we haven't talked about that you'd like to share? You know, the only thing I'd really want to say just to the to the citizens and the residents is that they're they are the most important part of this economic development mm-hmm. that's that's mm-hmm. happening, and so their voices are important, and so. Um, when, as we do our plan, and, and as hopefully as other people do their plans, that they get involved, uh, engaged, they get right. involved. They have to come to the meetings to voice their, their opinions about what they want their community to be. I tell people all the time, if, you know, if you're a real economic development professional, you don't go in and dictate what a community Tell folks what how it's going to be. Your, your job is to get everybody together. Let's get a collective plan. Now, you manage the plan, right? You drive the bus, but it has to be the plan that the community has said they want. Right. Um, and that's the only way that it works. And so, and, But the only way for us to do that is when we have these community meetings and these charrettes and these opportunities for the community to engage, they need to show up right. and, and, and be engaged in what's going on. And so um, that would really be you know, my biggest uh, appeal to, to the community and the citizens, just be plugged in and, and be, mm-hmm. be, be, be present. So, uh, are you are you planning to, to try to initiate and be, be if not lead, be be part of, of any community planning in the very near future? 
Yeah, so we, as part of our master planning process, we will announce a series of dates. We haven't put those dates together yet. Okay. Um, but once we have those series of dates, we will definitely be pushing that out to the community. Um, hopefully, you know, the radio station will be a, a, a partner with us in that and helping oh, get absolutely. the word out. Absolutely. Um, but that, that's what we're planning to do. And so we'll do it in enough time that folks can put it on their calendar and work, work around their schedules. But um, that's something that... I'm, that's part of my company that I have that you mentioned right, earlier. Right. That's what we do, community engagement. So I right. know how important it is. Urban Pulse Universal. Correct. Yes. Yeah. All right. Christopher Pike has been our guest tonight. Uh, he's the new director of the Jackson Redevelopment Authority, and um, he's coming to Jackson to, to set this place on fire, y'all. And we got to be a part of, of, of lighting it, striking the match to set it on fire, too, because we can be whatever we want to be in Jackson. So... <clears throat> uh, I, this is the end of our show, and um, uh, Jr., you, you you always like to to share what's become your and my favorite Martin Luther King phrase, which is, "There's nothing more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity." But John Wesley said, "Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can." to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. But Vernon Damon said it better than anybody else, Jr. If you don't vote, you don't count. <laughs>